Well, hey there, Power Pearlers. I want to welcome you to another episode of Power Pearls podcast. So you may have noticed that I dove right into this episode without any music. So there are no bells, no whistles, because this is going to be a short and sweet, I hope, short and sweet episode. And so, you know, I wanted to kind of take a look through the the video archives, the show notes, because I keep detailed notes for all the videos I've ever done on Facebook. And so I decided to go through and kind of pick a few, um, you know, and talk about something this week and next week, because I'm just kind of let you know right now, um, I'm going to be on a podcast break on November 14th. So I'm going to be releasing an episode today. So happy Halloween if you're listening to this in real time, because it's October 31st. And then next week, another little mini sode. And then it'll be the a break on the 14th. And then I will be releasing episode 100. Can you guys believe it? So I'll talk a little bit about that in an upcoming in the upcoming mini sode, uh, what you can expect because it is going to be quite different. Um, Let's just say there will be guests on the show and it's going to be a lot of fun. And I think you're gonna love it. Um, But today, I wanted to go through the archives and take a look at some of these topics because there are some really juicy ideas that I have uh, discussed over the last three plus years. I have been doing those Facebook Live videos for a long time now. Now I did take a few breaks, maybe only one big break, and occasionally a break here and there. And uh, and so I just started the, the videos up again a couple weeks ago. And I'm really super excited to just kind of go through uh, the, uh, the topics because it's like a treasure trove of information that I have. And I want you guys to know about it. So if you guys have been listening to the podcast, but you haven't yet checked out one of the videos, I really think that you should check it out because I do a lot of demos and tutorials and, you know, stuff that you really do need to see. But it also, it's a fun way to kind of consume the podcast because I do call it the video edition of Power Pearls podcast. So if you haven't yet watched a video you know, if you can't make it live, I totally get it because I go live at 2 p.m. on Wednesdays. At least that's, I'm saying that right now because next year it could be a, t- a totally different thing. Um, but I d- think I do a pretty good job at letting you guys know when I go live, you know, what day, what time. So if it's a different season and, you know, life changes and so on and so forth, you know, uh, yeah, I'll let you know. But right now, I do go live on Wednesdays at 2 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. So maybe that's not good for everyone. But you know what? The video archives have every video. They're very, they're categorized um, or they're organized by date. So, and also the descriptions are there. So if there's, you know, anything that you're looking for specifically, you can easily find it by going to the archives. You can check that out on Facebook. So if you, if you were to go to Facebook and then just type in, Power Pearls podcast in the search, you'll definitely find this page, my page. Um, So that would be awesome. So anyway, I want to share some of that love here on the podcast. And um, so uh, before I dive into the topic that I'm going to be talking about today, still on the, on the, uh, you know, on the same um, conversation here about the, about the videos, Today is the day. Today, so I go live on the po- on the on Facebook Live. So I do my Facebook Live video the same day I release the podcast, so that you can sort of you know enjoy both mediums. Um, and so, so I just want to let you know what I'm going to be talking about or what I'm going to be doing today because my son London is joining me again today, and he is the star of the show every time he's on. Uh, so last week, if you were able to join me, uh, we. I showed you guys how to do stick weaving with drinking straws, believe it or not. And it's so much fun. I have to tell you, I have been doing this myself. And so I'm working on a, uh, a design, uh, with, I'm using the five. So I showed you how to weave using five drinking straws. So it would create a really cool headband or a strap or a belt, right? 
And so I decided to, to use it as a strap and also as for the base of a bag. And I'm gonna, then I'm going to, after I'm done with the base, I'm gonna pick up around the edge of this little woven piece that I created and then I'm going to knit in the round and I am so excited. And then I'm gonna make a longer strip, a longer piece to uh, that will serve as the strap, which I think is a, a fabulous idea because you know it's gonna be a little bit sturdier because it's what it's like, you know, the weaving is a little bit different than the knitting. So I think it's going to hold up a little bit better, you know, it, because it's, you know, it's holding the bag. So I think it'll, it'll do well. So anyway, we're going to, we're going to talk about this again. I'm going to show you, uh, so I, a little faux pas last week, if you watch the video. So let's consider this part two of the weaving experiment of stick weaving. Um, and I'm going to show you how to uh, finish your work, how to take the work off the loom, the str which are the straws. I didn't show you guys how to do that last week. So that was kind of, um, you know, a, a little bit of a faux pas on my part. So I'm going to show you how to finish your work. And I'm also going to uh, show you a little trick or treat uh, mini goodie bag that you can make on the fly. Because of course, today is Halloween. And so you will, and I wonder if I just said tomorrow, I'm going to show you. I meant today. If I, I hope I didn't say tomorrow because I'm actually recording this the day before Halloween. <laughs> it's crazy. I'm always thinking in, in the future with the podcast, but today I'm actually really, really close. I'm recording only a day away. Um, so I, and I really like that because it's, I feel so much more spontaneous. And I know I talk a lot about batching ahead and all that stuff, but sometimes it doesn't always happen in a, you know, in a perfect world it does, but hey, we don't live in a perfect world. So anyway, today on the live video with London, we're going to also uh, show you how to make a trick or treat bag, a little mini goodie bag. So like if you're going to give out candies or maybe you're going to have a little party for the kids or some kind of, you want to give something to the kids in the neighborhood, whatever, it's a tiny little bag, you know, something you can make on the fly. So after you watch the video today, you can make, you can make it. And by the way, I know I said that I go live on at 2 PM as a rule. Yes, I will go live on to at 2 PM Eastern standard time but there will be exceptions to the rule. And by the way, today is one of those exceptions. And I'll tell you why. Because I normally go live at two. Uh, my son London gets home at 3.15 or so from school. And then I want him to get ready, practice his weaving. And of course, he's got to put on his Halloween costume, you guys, because he's Iron Man this year. And uh, he's very proud. And he even has the little light you know, the little Iron Man light on his chest. It's super cool. So I hope you can make it. And by the way, if you want to get on the update list, you can go to powerpearlspodcast.com forward slash Facebook live. And you'll get a reminder every time, like shortly before, I just say every week. So shortly before I go live, you will get a reminder that day via email. Okay. Um, okay, so what is today's mini sewed all about? So um, I'm going to be talking about stash enlightenment. So ways that you can reuse, remix, and reimagine your stash. Now we've talked about this before, and this, in my opinion, is like, in a way, it's kind of like an encore episode of a, a Facebook Live because it was so, uh, it was one of the most popular ones. Um, I also had a challenge surrounding this. I'm going to, I'm going to actually share some tips and then at the end, I'm going to give you a link so that you can go and watch these tips in action and some other stuff that I share because, you know, it's always good to see these things. So I have some things that I, I kind of have an assortment of, um, of, you know, ideas for you to jump off of, um, when it comes to how you can organize and use your stash for gift giving, because we're getting into that time of year. So I think it would be great, you know, and this is a good time, uh, you know, because like I said, I'm going to be taking a podcast break. This is light and easy and fun. And, uh, and so it's just this time of year, it does start to get hectic, which is really why I'm taking a break and just, you know, to get a little personal here. So, you know, there are, 
I'm going to be visiting my parents in Florida. You know, there, there are some things, family, you know, things going on, um, parents getting older, you know, really needing to tend to, um, just sort of being there and supporting them for certain challenges in life, right. That, that are, that have come up. So, um, so that's what I need to do. And I know you guys totally understand that. Okay. So that's what we're going to talk about. So this, what this idea of stash enlightenment, or in other words, stash therapy, I'm going to give you guys some stash therapy. Uh, and, um, so, you know, that's it. That's what we're going to do. And we're going to, uh, we're going to dive right in. So what is it? What, what is stash enlightenment? How can we remix and reimagine our stash? Because it's, you know, it's so easy to forget about all this yarn that's in our, you know, bins and baskets and all over the house. And, you know, we can become like a hoarder uh, if that stuff, you know, with all that stuff that we collect. It really can get out of hand. You know what I mean? Don't you agree? So today, um, you know, I'm hoping that some of these ideas that I share will inspire you to explore what's in that stash, you know, and maybe um, you can bring some of those yarns back to life. What do you say about that? We can maybe bring them back to life because, um, because, you know, that's what happens, right? They stay in the stash and sometimes they, they just collect dust and we'll go through and we'll say, oh, wow, look at that beautiful yarn that I totally forgot about because you know what happens sometimes I know I don't know about you but can you tell me if you're one of those people that you know you go to the yarn shop and you you know you impulse buy right and then you have this great idea and you think I'm gonna definitely do something with it but then you don't right you don't and for all you shop owners out there you know what I'm talking about right you got people that come in and maybe they get really excited because they really want to maybe make a sweater or start that challenging project, but then they never do. Or if they do, they do lose steam. They lose, you know, they lose excitement. They get discouraged. And obviously, you know, it's hard. You know, it's it's like ob- your job becomes this, you know, like you want to encourage them, right? So being able to show them what to do, how to do, um, uh, how to use their stash in cr- clever and creative ways and keep it simple is really the best approach because then they're going to come back to maybe making that sweater, you know, down the road. Um, but working with our stash yarns can be quite a creative outlet because we can assess the different colors and the fibers and, you know, what they're saying they want to actually become. So, you know, how can it become a source of good for your own creative yarn crafting adventures? Uh, you know, it can be, you know, making, making, um, items for charities, giving away unused skeins, you know, maybe doing a swap, doing a yarn swap, you know, because this is the thing that when we're giving away our yarn or, or swapping or, you know, uh, you know, creating something for a charity where we are, it's like we're ambassadors of goodwill, right? Of, of happiness. We're ambassadors, we're ambassadors of happiness. I just made that up. Um, because we are giving this, we're creating happiness for someone, which is incredible, or warmth, right? Because, uh, w- like, especially when we donate a, a blanket to a charity, uh, like Warm Up America, I mean, think about what you're doing for other people. The meaning behind that is immense. And sometimes I think we forget how immense it is. So, it's also good to purge, <laughs> you know, to get rid of the yarn, just like in any area of our life. When we clean our closets, you know, we clean house, we have a garage sale. Doing the same for our stash is this, it just feels good in purging and getting rid of yarn that doesn't serve us anymore. Because I know in my stash, I have yarn that maybe last year I said, well, yeah, I'm going to do something. I, you know, I think I will. And then you look at it, you know, the following year and you're like, why do I have this anymore? It's the same thing with like things that we keep for sentimental reasons and our yarn is no different, right? So um, I'm going to share some quick and dirty remixing and reimagining tips with you guys now. And then at the end, I'm going to share how you can actually watch all of this in action on the Facebook, uh, the Power Pearls Facebook page. You can watch the replay of my live video. Okay, so here we go. So here's the first tip. Now I didn't, (laughs) I'm looking at some notes that I have in front of me. I didn't create these as a numbered list. So I'm not going to, there are many, so I'm not going to number them because it would be different if I had like five quick tips. So here, these are like, gosh, I'm looking like 10 maybe. So there's a bunch. Okay, so let's get going. So here you go. So here's the first one. 
you can create color collections to dip into like tubes of paint. Now, how can you do that? So um, one thing I love to do, and I think I even show this in the video, is like you take the, these little teeny balls. Like there's something really enjoy, enjoyable um, about taking yarn, you know, these little tiny pieces, uh, bits of yarn, teeny tiny balls, and rolling them, you know, winding them up and putting these in various colors, like I said, like paint, you know, find a color palette that you, that's pleasing. And then you put them into yarn, uh, you put them into, sorry, mason jars that you can easily grab. Maybe mason jars with, um, with a pair of needles inside because like, you know, set it up like it's a project ready to go. Mason jar with all these different little tiny balls of yarn that are in the colors that you that you are that you are really loving with the needle size that you want to use to make whatever it doesn't even matter right now right it can be a complete mystery and honestly i know i'm probably going to forget this but that would be an awesome challenge i'm actually going to write it down you guys you're hearing me write this down i just dropped my pen i'm going to write mason jar challenge so here's a question for you. This was a totally off the cuff idea. What do you think about that? Where we ball up our, you know, wind up our little uh, yarns, you know, find the colors that we like, create our little palette and the yarns we want to use, uh, I'm sorry, and the, and the yarn and the <laughs> needles we want to use, put it all in our mason jar and get ready to, to, to just get in there and, and do this challenge. And then it's about coming up with our little stash projects. I don't know. This, I feel like this could be a lot of fun. What do you think? Email me, you know, get on onto uh, the website, go to the get in touch link. There's so many different ways I've mentioned over the course of time. So easy to get in touch with me. Leave a comment at the end of this on the, on the show notes page for this episode. And so you can get there by going to powerpearlspodcast.com forward slash stash therapy tips. Okay. And leave me your comment, your feedback, your idea. Do you love this idea? Mason jar challenge, yay or nay. Okay. Next tip. You can spit splice yarn. That's a tongue twister. I've done this before. I did this during the uh, shawls, the shawl maker mini challenge where you actually can, you know, you basically take two pieces of yarn, should be wool, um, I've also found that, um, superwash yarn works. I didn't think it, it would work, but as long as it's superwash wool and when you, and, and again, in the video, I think I show this to you, but there is one, there is a video out there, a live video that I showed this on. So you take each end, you s kind of break, you know, pull apart the fibers. Um, you know, some people actually lick their hand. I know that sounds gross, but I use a little tiny spray bottle of water, a little teeny, 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 tiny spray bottle that I always keep around spray that on my hand, separate the fibers on both ends of the yarn to join the, the yarns together. So you don't have to worry about joining at the beginning of the row, or maybe you want your project to be rustic and you want to join in the middle of a row. And this especially works well with uh, ombre yarns, color changing, variegated yarns. Um, but even if you don't want to do, you want to use just like um, different colors and you see like a change in color in the middle of a row, it's, it can be a very rustic, uh, arty look. So that's one of my favorite things to do. I love spit, spit splicing. And the next tip is, um, you can, um, create the mini balls, like I said before. So this is a tip that I used uh, in, in the video. Um, but the other one, the, the other idea with the mason jar challenge was totally new as a bonus. Um, but look, you know, keep little baskets around the house, turn your leftover mini balls into, you know, centerpieces maybe, why not? What a cool idea. Um, and so, you know, you can just kind of put them in little baskets around the house. And I also have a little note here that says, keep going with I cord, show London example. I don't even know what I meant by that, but I know that I was talking about I cords. Maybe it had to do with, you know, using, using I cords to create lots of different things. Like you could yarn bob, bomb something, you could tie, you know, wrap it around a, a vase. Um, you can do one of those plaques where you write someone's name. And that was something I was going to do with London and shame on me. We never did that. And he, he actually asked me yesterday, mom, when are we going to take the I cord that I made and, and glue that 
to my plaque. I'm like, oh my gosh, I'm such a bad mother. Anyway, no, I'm not. But um, but yeah, so that's something that you can do with Ico. There's so many, it's endless. You guys know this. Okay, next tip is mini bracelets or purses. Um, you know, this is a great way to take all those stash yarns, one of my favorite ways. And so I actually show the, a purse that I made for a challenge. There's a, there was a challenge that I had going on. And I may bring that back. I realize that that you may want to, you may wonder, well, how can I get my hands on that pattern? Um, it is, I believe it is for sale on my Etsy shop or I have it on Ravelry, but I don't really push all that because I'm not really all about pattern design anymore. I'm more about coaching, you know, designers helping you kind of move in that direction yourself if that's it's, if that's what you wish to do. My goal is to really, you know, be a coach and encourage you guys. But from time to time, I do, you know, the design bug, the designer bug uh, surfaces. So I designed this little purse and it was part of a challenge and a giveaway. Um, but anyway, little purses and little tiny, like little necklaces, little, you know, uh, just and fun little crafts for the kids, maybe finger knitting. There's so many ways that you can use your little balls. Um, let's see. So I also, in the video, I did show you some little bracelets and necklaces that I did as well. So you'll be able to see those. Then another idea is to make, just take a, just take a swatch, make a swatch, um, be really random with it. Um, very arty. Again, I love, I love, you know, being, you know, making yarn art, yarn playtime, uh, and then frame it, put it in a frame or one of those, picture boxes you know what I'm talking about they sort of have they're like a couple inches thick and they're for little decoupage or collages but you can you do that with your swatches It'd be so cute like a photo box um and then you know you've got you know you've got um uh, you know you can frame them or you can make you can put them you can stretch them on one of those little mini canvases have you seen those at Joann's or Michael's you can actually stretch your swatch onto a canvas and then you know just staple it on the back. I mean, no one's going to see it, right? And then you could put it into a really pretty little frame. Oh my gosh, what a sweet little gift that would be for someone, wouldn't it? Um, and let's see, what else? Um, make a swatch, use it like a rubber stamp. Oh yeah, that's a good one. So this is really good if you're making, let's say cables. Think about cables. Um, if you create some big, chunky graphic cables, you can actually and this is experimentation. So dip it in or, you know, dip it in paint or use a rubber stamp and just get ink all over it or get it a little bit wet with paint and then use it like a rubber stamp. My, just be careful. I wouldn't, I'd be careful with the amount of paint. Just really keep it light because then what'll happen if it's too saturated, you'll lose the stitches. You won't see you won't see the imprint. So the best thing is to start with a very light brushing of ink or paint or whatever, and then just turn it over and, and slightly press it down so that you can see the definition of the stitches pop up. So it's almost, it's almost like the same idea as like, you know, when you were, a, you were a kid, when you did this with a leaf, it's the same idea. You could do this with uh, a swatch. And that's, and I suggest a cable swatch because I think it would be a lot, you'd really see that graphic look. Um, so you know what? I think that's it. I, then I have a drop stitch cozy. Oh yeah. A co I show that in the video or you can just make a, a needle cozy or a uh, cozy for, uh, for a vase for your mason jars. And then you can have a, a, a bouquet of all of your, your straight needles because I never use mine anymore. They're all, they're all, you know, in bouquets around the house. The only straight needles I use are the double point needles. Um, but that's about it. So to see these tips in action, you can watch the video. So if you go to powerpearlspodcast.com forward slash stash therapy tips, that's going to take you directly to that Facebook live video, which is living in the archives. Uh, if you, for, for whatever reason you're, you're listening, you're out on a run or you're at the, you're working out or whatever, all you need to do is go to Power Pearls podcast on Facebook. So, uh, you know, facebook.com forward slash Power Pearls podcast, go to the video link and search the archives and you'll see the, I think it's uh, August 9th, 2017, or maybe it was 18. Oh my gosh. I thought it was, let me think, it was probably 2017. 
Um, but you'll see it. And uh, that's it, you guys. So, oh, and by the way, and I did say this earlier, but I'm just going to mention it again. Uh, I did this video a year ago. So, you know, I do mention a challenge, which is, you know, is over. So it's no longer in effect. So I just wanted to let you know that if you hear me talk about it, it ended a year ago, but I thought that, you know, it would be worth mentioning this video because you'll get to see all these tips in action. So I really know that you'll enjoy that. So that's it, you guys. I hope you enjoyed this, this quick mini-sode and I will see you next time. Take care.